Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the Complete Control Mark II integration with Ableton. So firstly we need to open Native Access and add to the serial number of our Complete Control. Once we've done this we can then install the software and update it and also update the firmware if we need to do that as well. Once you've done this what you then have to do is just open up the Complete Control software in standalone mode and this just allows all of the libraries and things to get updated properly before you open it up within Ableton Live. For the complete control to work properly and to be able to take full advantage of the integration with Ableton Live, we need to make sure we install the MIDI remote scripts and the instrument racks. To do this, we need to navigate to Macintosh HD, Library, Application Support, Native Instruments, Host Integration, and then Ableton Live. And here we have our remote scripts on the right and we have our instrument racks on the left. So now we need to open our applications folder. I'll just drag this over here so you can see more clearly. Now we need to copy our remote scripts folder by right clicking and selecting copy. We can right click on our Ableton Live folder and click show package contents. And then we go to contents, app resources and MIDI remote scripts. And here you can see I've already got a previous version of Complete Control. And the easiest way of pasting this in is just to right click the MIDI Remote Scripts folder and paste. And now you can see we've got the Mark II in this Remote Scripts folder. What we also need to do whilst we're in this MIDI Remote Scripts folder is we need to delete any of the old MIDI Remote Scripts for the Mark I and replace these to the most updated version of the MIDI Remote Scripts. And the reason for this is to make sure that the Mark 1 works with the latest version of the Complete Control software and that you get all of the door integration with Ableton. Next, we need to install the Complete Control instrument racks as well. So to do this, we just need to select them, right click and copy, and then navigate to wherever you saved your user library for Ableton Live. So the default place for this is Mac HD, Users, Your Username, Music, Ableton, User Library, Presets, Instruments, Instrument Rack, and then we can paste our instrument racks in here. Now we can open up Ableton Live and we can configure the preferences. So firstly, let's ensure our instrument racks are in the right place. So we go to Instruments, Instrument Rack, and we can see them here at the bottom. Let's just drag the VST version into a empty MIDI track. And that's working fine, but what we need to do is make sure we can control all of the DAW integration, such as the mixer, launching and stopping clips and moving between the different tracks. So to do that, all we have to do is go to the Link MIDI tab under the Preferences, and then under Control Surfaces, we select the Complete Control Mark II. And there's now no need to select the input and output for any of the control surfaces. That is all we have to do. If, however, you are still using a Complete Control Mark I, then once you've updated your MIDI remote scripts, you are still going to have to set the input and output for the control surface within this preferences window here. Let's just test this is now working. So as you can see, using the keyboard, I can navigate through the project. I can stop and start and launch clips and scenes. I can record. I can use the transport controls to stop and play overdub. I can turn the metronome on and off. And I've also got control of the tempo and the mixer as well. And on top of that, I've also got the native map, the light guide and smart controls. Another useful thing we can do, which is optional, is if we create a new MIDI track and put a empty version of complete control on it, right click the track and then select from the drop down, save as default MIDI track. And what this means is every time we create a new MIDI track, there's going to be a fresh instance of complete control already ready to go. So just to show you this, I'm now going to go to this track, open it up, and then from the keyboard, I can then work my way through the browser and load up a preset. In this case, I'll go for a user preset that I made earlier from Massive, and then we can go to the next track and we could load in something else, say a NKS preset such as Arturia. So here we've got the Jupiter. Whilst we're doing this, we also get full control of the DAW through the complete control. If you like to get things done quickly, an optional little trick is you can create yourself a default project template. So here I've got a empty instance of complete control for each of these tracks and I've got them all named and color coded. 
I can go through and I can choose any NI or NKS instrument that I might want. And then all I've got to do is go to Preferences, File Folder, and then save this as a default project. So now every single time I open Ableton Live, I've got this straight away ready to go and get creative. 